High Case Study Poor Conceptual Design Millennium Bridge at London presented by G. Open Department of Civil Engineering SNS College of Technology. Android Cushion This 320 meter span aluminium and stainless steel bridge across the River Thames in London was opened on June 10, 2000, amidst a lot of fanfare. It is the first river crossing to be built in London, after Tower Bridge, completed in 1884, and links St. Paul's Cathedral, in the North Bank, and the new Tate Modern and Globe Theatre, in the South Bank. In many ways it is an unusual structure. Sir Norman Foster, a famous British architect claimed to have designed it in association with an artist, Sir Anthony Caro and the engineers were Ove Roop and Partners, a distinguished firm of consulting engineers. From the start, Foster emphasized the innovative nature of its design. The objective was to push the suspension bridge technology as far as possible to create a uniquely thin bridge profile, forming a slender blade across the River Thames. Jonathan Duffy, a BBC commentator remarked it sounds great and on paper, probably looked sublime, but often reality is the harshest judge of cutting-edge architects. The bridge was made of aluminium decking and stiffened by suspension cables in the horizontal plane. No attempt was made to stiffen it in the vertical plane. During the first weekend, 10 June 11, 2000, some 160,000 persons crossed the bridge essentially because of its novelty. As people began to cross, it became apparent that the bridge was swaying several inches from side to side. The transient population on the bridge swayed drunkenly as they walked in synchrony, as if choreographed. The bridge was indeed wobbling dangerously over very deep waters. Many felt seasick while crossing. It was obvious that the bridge was not adequately stiffened to resist gravity loading. An American visitor remarked that the design of the bridge looks as flimsy as some of the rope bridges seen in Indiana Jones films. The bridge had to be closed to traffic after having been open only for two days. The designers are hoping to install dampers to reduce the oscillations to a minimum level. This case study illustrates the dangers of overconfidence. The designers had extrapolated the established technology into dangerous situations. It is true that dozens of bridges have been built all over the world. Nevertheless it remains the case that all the suspension bridges should be adequate both with respect to strength as well as stiffness.